Make sure you follow me on social media to get updates and ask me questions. Enjoy the video. Okay, so we have this form and when we submit, we return the data that we pass. Now I want to use this data and create an article. There are a couple of different ways to do this, so let's take it step by step and explore the different ways. So the first way is to use the eloquent ORM, Object Relationship Mapping. For this we need a model. A model is just a PHP class and the way to create a model very straightforward on your terminal you just have to run php artisan make model article in our case. So in this scenario we have the model, the article model, and the article model is used to interact with the article stable. So let me open the article model. So this is the article model, very straight, very simple. And this is the article stable right here. Now I want you to pay attention. There is a reason why the table name is articles, plural, and the model article, singular. If you keep this convention that Laravel provides, then Laravel will map by default this article model here to the article stable, which means that the current code that we have here is enough to make this model communicate with the article stable. For now, you can do some queries, not all of the queries that you can imagine, but because we will see later that to make changes, we need to do some extra work. But it can still communicate even if there is nothing here. The communication is done only by extending this model here. As I said, this is the convention that Laravel provides. Suppose you named your model articles with an S at the end and not article, then in that case you have to manually specify the table that this model will interact with. So the way to manually specify the table is by doing this protected table and then you give the name of the table. So in order to avoid doing this, Laravel provides that very nice convention. Now this convention will help us even more when we start working on relationships. So I will comment this line because it is not really needed since we follow the convention. In addition, Laravel by default assumes that your table has an integer as a primary key with the column name ID. You can also override this option, but we will take a look at it later in the course. Now that we have an idea about Eloquent, let's see how we can create an article by using Eloquent. So I will open my articles controller and I will go to this store method. So the first step is to create a new model instance and set the attributes of the model. In the end, we call the save method to save our instance to the table. So let's do this. Article equals to new article. And of course, we have to import it. Use app article. And here I specify the attributes. So we have article user ID, because remember, inside the table here, we have a user ID, we have a content, live and post on. So user ID equals to auth user ID. So this will get the authenticated user and then it will get the ID of the authenticated user. So let's also import auth here, use auth. And we can continue. Now the next one is article content. And remember, from the request, we have access to content, we have access to live and post on. So here I can say request content. Then we have article live equals to request live. Article post on equals to request post on. In the end, I just call the article the save method and this will save the model. Okay, so let me save this articles controller and go back to the form and see if this works. So content, I will check this one and then the post on date, submit. As you can see, we get this error that the column for live is not an integer because as you can see here, the value that we get back is a string on. And this value here, it means that the live checkbox was checked. So if I go back to this and I uncheck this, 
you see that now it is now. Okay, so how can we fix this problem? So back to this, now again it says on. Well, we can convert the value on to a boolean value, right? So let's do this. I will go here and I will cast this to a boolean. I will save, back to this, reload, and we get a blank page. And this is good because we have no errors. But if you go to the table, to the articles table, you can see that now we do have an article here with the content, the user ID, the post on date and the value for the live. So this is the first way of doing it by using Eloquent. Now there is another way to store an article. So what I will do is to simply comment all these lines here and do it in the other way. So this time I will use the create method instead. So using the create method, it can be even easier to do this kind of work. For the create method, we can do something like this. Article, create, and then request all. However, there's a problem with this. So if I save this and I go back and try this again, you see that it says mass assignment exception. Now this is to protect our table and it is a very nice technique. However, I still want to save an article by using this create method right here. To make this happen, we have to go to our article model and add some code here. So mass assignment is protecting us from bad guys that pass an unexpected HTTP parameter through a request. That parameter might change a column in the table that you do not want to change. For example, a hacker might send the ID through the request and the article, instead of getting the next ID, will get the ID that the hacker passes through the HTTP request. Remember, what we do here is to say inside the articles controller, request all. So what this will do is to map our data, which is content, live, and you can see it here, content, live, and post on with the corresponding columns in the table. And in the table, of course, we have content, live, post on, and of course the user ID. So because of this mapping, you do not have to specify its attribute individually. You can just use a request all, and this will map the data that you pass with the table columns, and all this with one single line of code. But as I said, because we have this mapping, somebody might pass the ID as a parameter. Those, the article will get the ID that the user passes through the request and not the next ID. So to avoid this, we have to specify either a fillable or guarded attribute on the model. So let's try this with the fillable first. So right here, I will say protected, fillable, and then this will be our whitelist. So the whitelist will include the user ID, the content, live, and post on, because this is what I want to save, right? I don't want to save the ID, I don't want to pass the ID or some other value. So this fillable here will be our whitelist. Okay, so with this setup, let's go back and try this again. Reload, continue, and now we get another problem. It says that the user ID has no default value, and this is because there is no user ID in our form, and if you remember, let me open the form here. So this is our form and there is no user ID inside the form. So what can we do for this is to add a hidden input. So let me do it right here. Input type hidden. The name should be user ID because remember we have this mapping, right? And for the value, we can get the ID of the authenticated user. So auth user ID. If I save this and I go back to the browser, back to this form here, reload, and I inspect this, you can see that we have a hidden input with the name user ID and the value 1. Okay, so let's try this again. Content 2, live, some date here, and submit. Now it complains again that live expects an integer because remember, live is a boolean in our table, but the value that we pass is the string on. So previously, to solve this problem, 
what we did was to cast this to a boolean, right? Instead, we can use mutators to do this automatically for us. So let's go to the article table and create a mutator. So public function set live attribute. This of course expects a value. And then this attributes live. So we want to set an attribute to the live column. This is a boolean, so we will convert this to a boolean. And what we will convert to a boolean? Well, the value that we pass. Okay, so I will save this, go back to this again, reload, and now again it works. So if I go to my table, you can see that now we again have the second content, the second article. So because we have a mutator now, even for this case here, we do not have to cast this to a boolean anymore. We can completely delete this. But I will keep this here so you can see the difference. Now regarding the fillable that we have here, you have another option. So think fillable as I said as the white list of attributes that should be mass assignable. Now guarded on the other hand is used to specify the attributes that you do not want to be mass assignable. An example for our case is this one. Protected, guarded, and we want to guard the ID. Of course, you should use one of these two options. Personally, I prefer it to the fillable option, so I will comment this one. Now, one last thing regarding the create method that we have right here. If you do not want to pass the request all and you want to manually do this, maybe because the names of your inputs do not match the name of the columns in the database, then you can pass an array instead, like this. Article create, and then here you pass the array. User ID of, oops, of user, and then we get the ID of the authenticated user, content, request content, live, request live, and remember, you do not have to cast this anymore to a boolean because we have the mutator right here that does it for us. Okay, and the last one is the post, post on. So request, post on. Okay, so let's try this last example. Let me just comment this other way here. Save, go back, back to this, uh, content number three. I will not have this live, submit, and again we get the blank page, so we have no errors, back to this, reload, and now you can see that we have the content 3 article, and the live value is 0. Okay, so now what I prefer doing is using this shorthand right here. By using this shorthand, it is, I think, the best way because you save a lot of lines of code. So let me comment this example here. Now, as I said, I prefer to use this way, except if I have a good reason to create an article by using an instance like we have done here, or by specifying the array myself, like in this case. But in any case, this will work in the same way. Uh, the extra work that you have to do is for the create, because you have to specify the attributes that should be fillable or the attributes that should be guarded. Okay, so this was how to do it by using Eloquent. Now, there is another way to do this with Query Builder. We pretty much have covered everything regarding store, so the next video will be kinda short, since we just have to use the Query Builder to insert an article to the table and, of course, discuss about the difference between Eloquent and Query Builder.